fractions and decimals. In this video, we're going to put together some of the things that we have learned about um, comparing fractions, about equivalent fractions, and about how decimals and fractions are related in order to solve three different sets of problems where we're given a group of decimals and fractions and have to put them in order from least to greatest. So I'm going to go through how I would solve this and then talk about some of the strategies that I use. So when I first see this problem, the first thing that pops out to me is that I have two fractions here that are bigger than one whole. So I'm going to save them for a minute, knowing that they're going to go over here and towards the greater side. Then I'm going to look and see that I have two decimals and one fraction. It would be really easy to compare three decimals, so I'm going to change this fraction into a decimal in order to easily compare them. I know that this is like 3 quarters, or th um, 75 cents, so the decimal equivalent is 75 hundredths. Now I can easily compare the three decimals that are here. So the smallest one, looking in the tenths place, is going to be 0 and 5 tenths, followed by 0 and 75 hundredths, which I actually have to write as the fraction, not the decimal in this case. Then the biggest one that's less than one whole is nine, nine tenths. Now I have to go back and compare one and one third and one and three fourths. And I'm going to think about, since I know that the whole number is the same, I'm just going to compare the um, fraction piece. And I know, comparing it to the benchmark one half, that one third is less than a half and three fourths is more than a half, so this one is going to be smaller. So I'm going to go 1 and 1 third, followed by 1 and 3 fourths. And this, these are now listed in order from least to greatest. So some of the strategies that I use are first zero in on the um, numbers that are bigger than one whole and save them till I'm done with the smaller ones. Compare to a benchmark. Remember I compared these parts of this, these mixed numbers to one half. And then finally, convert fractions to decimals. If you have a lot of decimals, go ahead and convert whatever fractions left into a decimal so that they're easy to compare. Okay, here's another set. And I'm going to use the same strategy and look for any fractions that are bigger than one whole or decimals that are bigger than one whole. And here's one, and here's one. But this improper fraction is kind of hard to deal with, so I'm going to think about what it is in a mixed number. 5 fourths, if I pull out 4 fourths to make a whole, that's going to leave me one whole with 1 fourth remaining. All right, now I'm going to go, I'm going to come back to these and, or, and put them in later. I have a um, two decimals and one more fraction. I know one eighth and a decimal, so let's change this into a decimal. An eighth is like half of a quarter. So a quarter was 25 cents. Half of a quarter is 12 and a half cents. So one, zero and 125 thousandths. Now I can compare them, and this one has a zero in the tenths place, so that's the smallest. Zero and four hundredths. Next, this one has a one in the tenths place, so that's the next biggest. Zero and 120, oh, sorry, I have to write it as one eighth, what I started with. And then the, other, the only other one that's less than one whole is 0 and 75 hundredths. Now I'm going to compare one, 1 and 1 third to 1 and 1 fourth. When the numerators are the same, you want to look at the denominators. This smaller denominator means bigger piece. This bigger denominator means a smaller piece. So this fraction, because the numerators are the same, this fraction is going to be smaller. So I have to write it like I originally started with, 5 fourths. And then the biggest one is going to be 1 and 1 third. So the strategies I use to solve this one are changing improper fractions to mixed numbers, easier to deal with and compare it. And when numerators are the same, like right here, Think about the size of the pieces. So smaller denominator means bigger piece. For the final set of decimals and fractions, I'm going to first see if I have any that are bigger than one whole. And I don't, so I can't use that strategy. Next, I'm going to think about 
a benchmark. An a easy benchmark to use is always one half. So I'm going to go through each one and see if it's bigger than one half or less than one half. Two thirds is greater than one half, so it's going to go that way. Oh, this, all of the rest of them are in fraction form, so let's go ahead and put this in fraction form. 25 cents is like breaking a dollar into four pieces or one quarter, and that is less than one half. Um, one twelfth is less than a half, and five ninths is greater than a half. So I see that I have two that are less than a half and two that are greater than one half, which means that one half is going to have to go in the middle, so that makes it easy. Now I'm going to compare the two that are less than one half, which was this one and this one. All right, so looking at that, one fourth and one twelfth, the um, bigger denominator means smaller piece, so this one's going to, one twelfth is going to be less followed by one-fourth, but I have to write it like the decimal that I started with. Now I need to compare the two that are bigger than one-half, this one and this one. The, there's a great case where um, I see that I'm going to need to use equivalent fractions. These are both bigger than one-half, and so it's sort of hard to um, compare them. So I'm going to use a common denominator of nine, and I'm going to change two-thirds into ninths. And I ask myself, how do I get from three to nine? Well, I multiply by three. So I'm going to do the same thing to the numerator. Two times three is six. So this fraction, two-thirds, is equal to six-ninths. Six-ninths is a little bit bigger than five-ninths. So this one is uh, the smaller one. Five-ninths, and followed by the biggest one, which was six-ninths. It started out as two-thirds. So some of the strategies, and here's the final answer. Some of the strategies that I used was to convert decimals to fractions. If you have just one decimal, go ahead and compare them all as fractions and use some of our fraction strategies. And then finally, use equivalent fractions when they are really close and not able to compare in any other ways.